Hey guys, welcome to my first video in my software engineering interview track. Now, since this is the first video in this new track, I want to just quickly explain what it's all about. My goal is to go through tons of typical software engineering interview questions. And my approach to this is going to be giving you guys an opportunity to see the question, pause the video and attempt to answer it yourself. And then after the fact, I'll go through it to the best that I can and explain and walk it step by step how you would implement this in C Sharp. Now, I'm going to be using C Sharp, but you can use any programming language. These are just basic algorithms. And yes, the syntax would be slightly different, but that's not really too big of an issue. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I've noticed that there really isn't too much content out there walking through typical algorithms that you would see in an interview. And a lot of these are just tricky questions and knowing how they work behind the scenes can really help you understand these. So I plan on truly walking through them step by step and explaining the logic behind these algorithms so that you're not just memorizing a formula, but you actually understand the core concept. So this is going to be the first video and like I said, I'll give you guys some time to pause the video and read the question. So today's first question is going to be write a program that takes as input a sorted array and then updates that sorted array so that all duplicate values have been removed and the remaining elements have been shifted left to fill the empty indices. So those are the spots that were deleted because they were duplicates. So return the number of valid elements and many languages have functions built into the libraries that perform this operation, but obviously you cannot use those. So to get you guys started, this is what I want. This is the basic form. So you have an array, as you can see, there are duplicate values. You'll call a method that returns an int that takes in the array. And then you'll just display the array using that index at the end, which indicates that's the end of the array to, to make sure that all the duplicate values were removed. So at this point, you can go ahead and try it on your own. And then I'll start in a few seconds on the solution. Okay, welcome back guys. And hopefully you had an opportunity to try it on your own. But now let's go through the solution. And it turns out that for this algorithm, there's actually multiple solutions. And you'll see that in most software engineering interviews, there's always multiple ways of doing it. Typically, there are good ways and bad ways of doing it. Now, in this solution, there's actually three common ways to solve this problem. Now, in the question itself, I noted that you have to do this removal in place, meaning you can't create a second array and then copy the values over. If you did that, there are a number of ways of doing that, which will allow you to get a big O of n time complexity. However, you're going, your, your space complexity will go to big O of n. We want a constant space complexity. So that solution won't work. A second solution where we can get space complexity to a constant. However, our time complexity would go to quadratic and squared would be to basically start in the beginning of the array with a loop. And then whenever we check, let's say the first two values, if they were duplicate, then take the value to the right of that duplicated value and shift every element to the left. So as an example, let's use these two fours. If we had a pointer pointing at four and one at four again, so left and right, and we said, okay, they're duplicates. So the algorithm would say, take all the values to the right of that duplicate and shift them over once. So seven would go to four, then the other seven would go where that seven was and so on. And by doing that, you're gonna have to use a nested loop, which would then cause this to be n squared if for the time complexity. So there actually is a solution to make this linear time. And the solution is similar to what we just said, the brute force solution. However, we can optimize the amount of copies or swaps that we need to do um, because it turns out that obviously the data is sorted and we can use that to our advantage. So I'm going to run you through the basic idea here, like the, the trick behind the scenes, and then we'll go ahead and implement it. So to solve this, we're going to start off with creating a pointer 
to the first element and then a pointer to the second element. Now, the purpose of the first pointer, which I call end of list, the purpose of that is to keep track of all basically the end of our array that contains no duplicates. And the reason why I can start at the first element is because I know if you're, if you're a single element, you can't be you can't have duplicate values. So the first element must be unique. So I place it there. And then we basically follow this simple rule. And the rule is if my end of list pointer is not equal to scout. So every time that is true, then we'll increase end of list by one, that pointer. And then we copy the value from scout to end of list. And when you see this algorithm happening, you may be saying, wait, why am I doing that? That seems weird, but I'll explain. And it happens right away. I'll show you. So if we start this algorithm with end of list at the first element and scout at the second element, we do the check if end of list is not equal to scout well two is not equal to three so i the rule says i increase end of scout or end of list by one and then i copy scout into end of list now both of these values are pointing at three so when i do a copy it's really just putting three into three and you may be saying well why am i doing that and the reason is because if you look at the rule end of list only increases when it's not equal to scout but when i when, when they are equal which means we have a duplicate then scout is going to just increase by itself even though i don't have that in the rule you'll see how that happens and then eventually when a, a copy happens then it wouldn't be copying into the same value and it will be fixing and deleting that duplicate value so you'll see so then scout goes up by one we do the check again there since they're not equal end of list goes up by one and then it performs the copy but now when scout goes up this time now they are the same value so we're not going to increase end of list we're going to stay at at that point and this makes sense right because i found a duplicate so i want to make sure end of list is accurately representing the end of the list that has all the unique values so if i were to increase that right now then it wouldn't be unique anymore we would have a duplicate in that set so i'm not going to increase end of list i'm going to increase scout now since these values are once again not equal the algorithm says increase end of list by one and then now as you can see when we perform the copy seven is going to get copied into four so the new list would then be two three four seven now the reason why this is a lot more efficient than the brute force solution of doing a swap all the way down to the end is because obviously we're just doing one copy of a value here. We don't have to shift every single one over. So instead of a swap, we're just copying that value and we don't care that we lost that four because we wanted that four to go away anyway. So we just replace it with the value after it. Okay. Then once again, scout increases since these are equal nothing happens scout increases again so now the scout found a different value and we want that to be inside of our bounds of our, our unique list because eight and since we know this data is sorted and we know the end of list is at seven and eight is greater than seven so we want this to be part of the list we know it's not equal to seven so we're going to increase the end of list now because we want to include that eight and then we copy the eight over and then we have our new list, two, three, four, seven, eight. Once again, scout goes up. He sees another value that's different than eight, which so we want this in our list again because it's a sorted list. If it's not equal, it must be greater, and we want it in our list now. So we increase end of list and we copy it over. And then finally, well, there's our new list. And then finally, scout will go to nine. We see that it's a duplicate. So remember, we do not move the end of list. So scout goes to the end and then we would terminate the loop that we were, that was controlling this. And as you can see, since we're doing an in place, um, kind of swap here, eight, nine, and nine is still technically in our array, but the purpose of the, the problem is that it returns the index of the last element basically, or it actually returns the, the index of the element that follows the last element and I'll show you why and that's just because I wanted it that way it could be any way you want to implement it um but yeah so 8 9 and 9 is technically still in the array so at the end here 
we're going to return end of list plus one. And the reason why I want to do plus one is so that when I'm iterating over um, my array, when I want to display the data, I can then go to end of list in my upper bound for my loop, and I'll get that last element captured. If I didn't, if I just returned end of list, then I would have to do a plus one to capture, or or in my loop I have to say less than or equal to, which these are all fine solutions, just this makes it a little bit easier for my for loop, so I just return end of list plus one. All right, so that is the basic algorithm. Now let's implement it in C Sharp. All right, so here we are back in the C Sharp program, C Sharp console application, and we have the same setup, and we're gonna now implement the delete duplicates method. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to add a simple check to see if the array is empty. And, and if it is, then we'll just return zero because then th th uh, there's no duplicate values because there's no values in it, right? So I'll say if array sub length or dot length equals zero, then just return zero. Okay. Now remember in my illustration, I had my first pointer, which is called end of list. So I'll call it end of list and I'll point it at the first element. Then we had the scout variable and remember the scout variable or the scout pointer was responsible for just going through every single element in the list. So you can think of that as a loop. So I'll make that a for loop and I'll just call my scout variable I, but I could call this scout if I really wanted to, to match the diagram. But typically we just say I. So I'll say as long as I is less than array dot length, I plus plus and then in my for loop remember we had that one rule and the rule was if the array sub end of list so the end of list if that was not equal to the array sub I so the scout if that was the case if they were not equal then I would first increase end of list by one so that went up and then I did the copy so I said array end of list equals array sub i or scout and that was basically the entire algorithm if they are equal which means it doesn't enter right scout will just increase by itself because scout is the for loop so it will go up by itself still and then i simply say return end of list plus one and when remember i'm just saying plus one so that my for loop here because remember my for loop goes from i to the end of list so if end of list represented the last element that was actually in it, which it does in this algorithm, then this wouldn't display it unless I did a plus one or something there. So I just do plus one here to keep that for loop working. And then when I run this application, let's see what happens. So in this data set, we have, it was, there was duplicates four, sevens, and then fours and sevens. So now you can see two, four, th two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there's no duplicates. So there you have it. So guys, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please like it and let me know in the comments because I would love to do hundreds of questions like this, maybe a couple every single week to help people that are preparing for software engineering interviews.